So we all know most databases store the data in B plus trees, but how? In this video, we answer this very question and go through the evolution of storage from a naive implementation to an optimized B plus tree. We will talk about why there was a need to use B plus trees, how table data is actually stored in B plus trees, and how is this tree serialized and stored on the disk. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year and a half now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue at all. Instead, a small focused group of 50 to 60 engineers will be brainstorming the systems and designing it together. This way, we build a very solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course is enrolled by 800 plus engineers spanning 12 cohorts and 12 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many, many, many more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The course is focused on building systems the way they are built in the real world. We will be focusing heavily on building the right intuition so that you are ready to build any and every system out there. We will be discussing the trade-offs of every single decision we make, just like how you do in your team. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toilet balancer to quick buses live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale. In all, we would be covering roughly 28 systems and the detailed curriculum split week by week can be found in the course page linked in the description down below. So, if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course and the second one is the recorded offering. The live cohort based course happens once every two months and will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to learn and want to binge learn system design, I would recommend going you for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss the systems and its design live with me and the entire cohort. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhani.me slash masterclass. I repeat, arpitbhani.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I have also put the link of this course page in the description down below and I am looking forward to see you in my next cohort. So we all know SQL databases are known to store data in B plus trees, right? But it is true that even non-relational databases, they leverage B plus trees to store the data. For example, MongoDB does that. MongoDB stores the collection data on disk serialized in terms of B plus tree. So their storage engine called Wired Tiger does that. Now, in this one, what I would like to do is to build an intuition around why there was a need to introduce a data structure like B plus tree and how it is actually serialized and stored, like the data is serialized and stored on the disk. Now, in order to do this, let's start with something really simple and then we see why is there even a need to do that. Now, let's say the most simplistic way to store data, let's say I have a table, I have a bunch of rows in that table, the most simplistic way to store the data is to store it in a single file, one row after another, dead simple, right? Now, when you have something like this, when we store data in a file sequentially, one row after another, literally one after another in a file, let's see how insert works. Now here, just a thing that when I say row, it does not just imply row, but even a document, anything, any entity that we are storing in the table could be placed over here. So SQL tables typically call it rows, no, non relational databases typically call it documents and whatnot. But idea holds true across the database spectrum, right? So here, what I would want you all to do is to focus on the need and the intuition rather than the specifics. Then everything would make sense, right? Okay, so let's start with that. Let's say I have a bunch of rows over here and I would want to insert a new row. Now, given that all the rows that I have is placed in that file sequentially, which means one after another, inserting a new row, inserting this new row at the end of the file is really easy. You open the file in append only mode and add the row at the end, right? But now for example, we know that relational database or most databases store the data ordered by primary key, which means that let's say I have defined a particular column ID as my primary key and I'm inserting row one, two, then five, then four, and then three. 
Now I'll have row one, two and five inserted. Then I would, when I would want to insert the row in between, because the table is ordered by that. For me to insert the row in the between, what would I have to do? Given that I cannot just insert a line in middle of a file. I just cannot do that because when I would write something in between the offset, the line does not automatically, the rows automatically would not move down the file. Right? That's what a classic problem on a disk based solution is. Right? It's not in memory buffer like we see in code editor where we just hit enter and it adds a new line. It's on disk storage. So when I would want to write something in between, it is definitely trying to override the existing content right? that I cannot do, which means adding a new line in a file in between rows is not an efficient solution because now what we'd have to do is every time the insert happens, I would have to first locate the position at which I would want to insert, then copy all the lines, all the rows before that in a new file, add this new line then copy the remaining file on this new or uh, 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 basically copy the remaining lines in this new file right this way my insert becomes order and because every time i am inserting something i would have to create a new file that's the only way to do it because if whenever you write at a particular location whatever is written at that location in the file gets overridden right you cannot just insert in between in one file on any disk right so that's the limitation number one and that's why insert becomes order n. Okay, now let's take a look at how update looks like. Now let's say I want to update row three, right? Now in order for me to do that, I would have to look for the row with ID three, right? So then worst case, I would have to do linear scan across or the entire file and find the rows that and find the row that I'm interested in. Then once I discover that row, I would start writing at that specific location and overriding the content. Now, here are the challenges. Given my other rows are already occupying some space, when I'm writing something from this location, starting from this location, I would have to write the number of bytes equal to the width of this row. I cannot go beyond that because as soon as I go beyond that, I would be infringing in the location, in the storage location of the next row, I'd be overriding this content. It cannot move automatically forward, just like in ID. In ID, it can move forward because it is RAM. You're storing that file in, you're loading that file in RAM and then making the update. When you press control S, then it gets saved on the disk, right? Here you cannot do that. So if let's say this number of bytes were 100 and if I would want to write 120 bytes, so 100 bytes would be written over here and 20 bytes would be written over here, or infringing in the space, of the row ID four, right? So now for you to do an update, you first have to locate, right? And then assuming that you would be updating the exact same width, you can start overwriting over here. But if you'd want to do more than this width, you cannot do that. You'd have to create a new file, enter like copy the rows, uh, similar to insert, copy the rows, write this new row and then update. And sorry, and then basically copy the rest of the rows, right? That's why file IO is so, so interesting because it, you just cannot do it intuitively, right? You need to know the constants that you are playing with, right? Okay. Now let's say I would want to find a new row because in, even in insert, you wanted to hunt for location, even in update, you would want to hunt for location, right? So now let's see how hunting for a location looks like. How do you find one in the file for you to do that? The only way to do it given because basically given right now, there is no indexes, even in case of indexes, you cannot do it efficiently if you go with this structure. But now here, what you would have to do is you have to literally go through file row by row and see the, and find the row that you're interested in. There is no way for you to optimize it. Binary search, you can do it, but when you have right set of indexes, but how we'll, we'll take a look, which is where B plus three comes in, right? But a naive implementation, linear scan is the only way to do it. Okay. Now, another common operation that you see in databases is range queries. Now, range queries are quite popular. Like, give me all the rows which are present in this range, like let's say one to 100, right? Now, for you to do it, range queries, you can do it only, you can do it efficiently in this case. Why? Because first of all, let's say I want to find rows between two and five, right? So I start from here. I'd find the row with ID two. I found this, and then I'll continue to iterate one after another until I find row five. And then I would just club the results and send it out to the user, right? So range queries are efficient, but in order to find the first row itself, 
the worst case is order n you'd have to do a linear scan right so range queries uh, once you find the first row then the range query becomes like a linear scan but before that that complexity to find the first row itself is order n because it's a find one operation right so even find one operation is order n you like not getting enough performance out of your database not the final operation delete right delete as you might have guessed already when you are deleting a particular row it's you would have to create a new file every time you delete given this naive implementation because what you would do is you would create a new file copy all the rows until you like first of all you would have to find the row that you would want to delete find one operation order n worst case then you copy the rows up until that location into a new file right and then you skip that row and then you copy rest of the rows over here that's how you would delete the row because it's file io you cannot just delete something without and not reclaim the space because then you are effectively occupying that row right so you would anyway have to do it so all the operations that we discussed are order n insert update find delete everyone is order n so how does b plus t solve this problem so given that order n insert update delete cannot work well with in a transactional database it's not performant enough we have to find another solution which is where b plus t comes into the picture now what is a b plus now we'll not go into the data structure b plus t we'll understand how b plus t is leveraged so in case you don't know what b plus t is just a google search away but let me talk about how b plus t's are leveraged over here so in a table there are bunch of rows right a table consists of rows a collection consists of documents now when you have all of these rows you club these rows in one b plus tree node so for example if one b plus tree node that i have if it is 4 kb big which means i can store 4 kilobyte of data in this one b plus tree node then in that case if my average row size or average row document length average length of the document uh, of the row is let's say 40 bytes in a sql table if i may call it the schema that you have you define fixed width for every single column you exactly know the length of the row right that i'm talking about if the length of the row is equal to 40 bytes and if my b plus 3 node is 4 kb big each node will contain 4 kb divided by 40 roughly 100 rows which means that in this b plus 3 node the number of rows that i can put in is 100 rows so this is row 1 row 2 row 3 row 4 and so on and so forth right so this is exactly what b plus 3 stores when it says that hey i my table is storing the data in b plus 3 this is the leaf node of b plus 3 where you are actually storing the rows of the table right okay so now typically typically the why did i pick 4 kb as the size of this b plus 3 node in most typical configuration the size of a disk block is 4 kb now what is this disk block when you do a disk io you read a write a delete do something on the disk the most granular width in which it is done is 4 kb it is basically called as a disk block size so even if you would want to read one byte from the disk you cannot just read one byte you have to read the entire disk block and then pick the byte that you are interested in and then like the operating system does this for you but in reality because your operating system is reading that entire block that is the most granular width that you operate on that entire one that entire 4 kb block is read it picks one byte and discards everything else now given this given that the most granular operation that you are doing is on 4 kb you keep the size of a b plus 3 node equal to 4 kb which means whenever you are reading you are reading that one b plus 3 node as is like as is right which means you are effectively reading roughly 100 rows over here i'm not going into nitty gritties of weight like exact structure but you get the idea right there are spaces allocated for pointers and all so it's not exactly 100 rows a little slightly lesser than that but you get the idea right okay so given this is how my rows are structured in b plus 3 nodes now b plus now my table can be represented as a set of b plus 3 nodes which are connected to each other now how 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 are you connecting it for example for example i have 
वी नो दैट वन बी प्लस थ्री नोड एज पर आर एजम्पन फोर के बी डिस्क ब्लॉक साइज इक्वल टू फोर के बी साइज ऑफ बी प्लस थ्री नोड ईच रो इज फोर्टी बाइट सो आई कैन स्टोर वन हंड्रेड रोज राइट ओके सो गिवन दैट आई नो दैट ईच नोड कैन स्टोर वन हंड्रेड रोज आई विल हैव लेट्स आई हैव फोर हंड्रेड रोज सो फर्स्ट नोड विल कंटेन वन टू वन हंड्रेड सेकेंड रो विल कंटेन वन हंड्रेड वन टू टू हंड्रेड third row third block third node would contain 201 to 300 and then the final node would contain 301 to 400 right okay now these nodes can be present in any location on the disk now what your database does internally it does not just allocate a random disk block on it it has a proper structure in a file where it knows from this is this this particular block is there from this offset to this offset this particular block is there i am drawing it in a randomish way so that you understand that it's, it might not be sequentially arranged you cannot assume that they are arranged one after another right okay that's why i'm just drawing it like this so that you don't fall into the trap and thinking that all of my rows are stored one after another they are not they might be but need not be right okay now each node contains a small pointer exactly a disk offset like at this offset in this file this is where my this b plus 3 node is present right it will show now this might not be individual files this may be part of the same file itself but in that file you split a file into different regions each of the same size this which is same as 4 kb and you just note down the offset of that and storing that offset becomes a pointer to that node as similar to c Where pointer is exactly the address of the memory location. Here, the pointer is the offset in that specific, this specific file. Right now, this is exactly how your data is stored, or your table data, or your document data is stored, serialized on the disk. These nodes become the leaf node of a B plus three. You would have. you you would remember that the leaf node of the b plus 3 also stores the data this is exactly what they are talking about these are the leaf nodes of my bp of my b plus 3 which is actually storing the row data that you have right okay but is this even making your insert update delete efficient now b plus 3 does not just contain leaf node right it contains other nodes so what is stored in other nodes let's go through that a simple table when visualized as a b plus 3 a very simplistic uh, visualization for you to understand the concept is this so a b plus 3 may contain n levels i'm taking example of 3 that it becomes easier to understand now here this is the root of the b plus 3 node then you have first level and then you have the actual leaf nodes where the actual table data is stored right here you can see how a table data is stored in b plus 3 row or rather id 1 to 100 101 to 200 200 1 to 300 and so on and so forth are stored over here now let's see what each node holds in b plus 3 now again each of this this is a very nice visual way to see it on this they might be spread anyhow right in the table file it depends so depending on the database what storage engine they are using for example mysql db has mysm in odb and what not they may choose a different way to store this or different way to allocate this b plus 3 node on the disk in that region we don't have to worry about it that's the implementation specific but in a nice visual representation this is how we can visualize it very easily now every b plus 3 node is serialized and stored on the disk so all of these nodes that you are seeing they are not stored in memory they are all on disk they may be brought into memory for performance gain but the worst case is they are all stored on disk okay non leaf nodes they hold the routing information when i say routing information it's not something nodes routing what i'm talking about is it tells that in the child node which node holds what range of data for example here this node non leaf node stores 1 and 101 which means that the left node starts with one id and the right node starts with id 101 Right here, the left node starts with two zero one, and right node starts with three zero one. So from two hundred and one to three hundred and one, you can find it over this, and so on and so forth. Right, this is the offset or the routing, not offset, but the routing information. That the range information, which might be the better word, range information of what the leaf B plus three node holds, and vice versa. So as level increases, they keep holding the range information of their child. Right. Okay. Now for you. to make any insert update delete 
you now you can very clearly see and oh, sorry before that before we go into the operation side of things as always in b plus 3 node the all the leaves are interlinked or they are connected linearly like each leaf is connected like like this they are linearly connected right so the first node second node third node they are linearly connected and they are also part of the b plus 3 now we'll see how beautifully this solves a problem right okay leaf node as i we discussed holds the actual rows these are row ID 501, 502, 50, but this is actual row data and leaf nodes are connected linearly. Now, now let's take a look at operations, how this makes sense. Right? Let's start with find one by ID operation, find one, like given an ID, find me the row. Now for you to do that, in order, to, in order for you to find a particular row with a particular ID, what would you need to do? Let's say I would want to find row with ID 4, what will I do? I'll start with the root node. Now, this node is present on disk. So first thing what I'll do is I'll go to the disk, read this particular block. I'll read this particular block, interpret the routing information, and I would know that ID4 is present in this range. I would go over here. <coughs> and how would I know that? I would just store the, the left and the right, like the least and the most value over there through which I'm routing, like here. 1 and 101 is what I'm storing. I am not don't want to store every single row's information. Right? Because its range is what I'm operating on. Correct. So now here I would have information which is, let me just be very specific on that. I would store 1, 201 and 401. Kind of like this information would be stored. So this means that 1 to 201, if I'm requesting for this ID, I have to go over here. If I'm requesting something for 20, between 201 to 401, I would have to go over here. 401 greater than 401, I have to go over here, right? That's typically what we store in B plus three, right? Okay. So now what do we do? Let's say we are requesting for row ID three, right? So now what I'll do? Three lies between one and 201. So it would first read this block, understand, hey, I'm looking for three, it's present in between one and 201. So it would go to the first node. Here it would say three, one and 101. So over here, it would come over here and read so read this block come over here then read this block from the disk read all these hundred rows again it's a disk read it would read all these hundred rows and find which one is row id 3 get that and return it so now what your linear scan was is now just boiled down to one two and three disk reads that's it where you are doing this multiple discretes at first, now it just boils down to three discretes and you get the row that you are interested in. Dead simple. Right? Now here you beautifully see, no matter which row you request, you would get it in this specification in exactly three discretes, not one extra. One for this block, one for this block, one for this block, extract this row and return it to the user. Right? This is how your reads would work, right? Find one by ID. Now, let's take a look at next operation, which is insert. Now, how would insert work? Insert, what we would first have to do is, let's say I'd want to insert row four. What I will do, read this block, understand where the four while would lie in the leaf node. I'd come over here, insert, uh, find row four, where four would lie. I'd find this, I would read this entire block, find, the place where I can place the row four, it would be after three. And because I'm loading it in memory, I can do that arrangement, add something in between and move other forward, right? I can do that array movement, right? You can do that if you're storing it in arrays. You put it in between and then flush the entire thing on the disk, which means you read this, you read this, you read this, you put your row four, and then you put it and you flush this B plus 3 node on the disk. So, one disk read, two disk read, three disk read, update in memory and one disk flush. Right? So, this way, you have your insert can happen in between. You don't have to rewrite the entire file. In linear sequential way that we were storing, we would have to rewrite the entire file. Here, we don't have to. Here, what we are getting is we are getting this benefit that without touching any other disk block, any other B plus P node, I'm just reading the blocks I'm interested in, updating them and flushing it down. Right? And obviously the B plus P 
rebalancing and all comes into the picture. So that specifications of B plus tree as a data structure, go through that. That's out of the scope. I'm talking about how database actually stores the data, right? Okay, that's about insert. Similarly, you can envision updates. You read, 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 update the row. Let's say I want to update row 202, right? Let me take a different example. Update row 202. I would read this. I would know you come over here, read this. I would now have to come over here, read this. In memory, now I have the entire disk, the entire B plus three node in memory. I would update whatever I'd want to flush it down on the disk, right? If I'd want to do arrange and move it and whatnot, I can do all of that. But without altering any other block, I am just doing the updates that I'm interested. I may have to split and rebalance the B plus three. That is a different problem, but it makes my operation so simple. Fine. Similarly, when you are deleting it, what you do, let's say I want to delete row 401. I read this, read this, read this in memory, delete this block. I literally, if it's I'm storing it in an array, I would just delete that part in memory and then flush it onto the disk. The way I do it, when I flush it, the row is gone and that's my hard deletion. Then I might have to rebalance the tree in order to maintain the M by N factor that you know, like standard B plus three practices. But now here you see how beautiful your operation gets. Right, so simple, so efficient without touching anything else, you get the raw power of the disk. Right, the final operation I want to talk about is range query. Let's say I want to find all the rows whose ID lie in the range 100 to 600. Now for you to do this, see how beautifully that, that leaves that are connected, that solves this problem so beautifully. Now let's add one to read rows whose ID uh, is in range 100 to 600, right? Okay, what I'll do, I'll want to read 100, right? So I'll start from here. Where does 100 lie? Here, I'll come over here. Where does 100 lie? Over here. So I'll start from here. From 101, I'll read this block. I'd say, did I read 600? No. So then I have to read this block. But now instead of coming from here, here, and till here, because these nodes are connected, like this, you can linearly traverse through this. So I read this, I read this, with this point I read this until I reach 600. As soon as I reach 600, I stop. So now what we are doing with this leaves directly connected with each other, what you get is you don't have to iterate through this from top to bottom again and again. Once you reach at the leaf, you can just linearly traverse like this. That's the beauty of this data structure. Now, the number of discretes is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The bare minimum that you have to do, log n to reach to the first point and then linearly depending on the number of rows that you are reaching. Such a beautiful implementation. That's why data structures, this B plus tree is so, so, so powerful because of this very reason. Why B plus tree? forces you to store data at the leaf node, now you get it. B trees allow you to store data in the middle, in the, in the non-leaf node also. But B plus tree forces you to store data in the leaf node. This is precisely why, because it makes your range queries super efficient. It gives you predictable times to read any row from your database, right? This is the power of B plus tree. And this is why most databases out there, they use B plus tree to store and hold their actual data, right? And it's not just specific to SQL, no SQL databases like MongoDB in their wired tiger storage engine, they do this, right? This is the beauty of B plus tree and how database and why database stores the data in B plus tree. And this is what I wanted to cover. I hope, I really hope you found it interesting. Now, I think most of your questions around why database use B plus trees to hold the data would be solved. But once again, explore on this in a bit more detail, understand B plus tree in case you are unaware, right? But this is precisely why database use B plus tree to store the data. Again, I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it interesting, amusing, sorry. And uh, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.